Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. It's Wednesday, February 9th, 2022. I am Andrew Hansen, ready to break down the WM Phoenix Open, the Super Bowl of PGA tournaments. It has become synonymous with the Super Bowl as the timing coincides with Super Sunday as uh, the fourth round will be played on the same day as the big game. Uh, and it's an exciting atmosphere. Uh, if you'll recall, this is the course with the 16th hole par three with the fans all around going crazy as the golfers are playing in a very, very unique setting, nicknamed the Coliseum, that par three. Uh, so it's an exciting event. The players have fun with it, wearing jerseys. Uh, the fans have a lot of fun with it, and we're going to try to do the same here in DFS. Much different setting also than what we saw last week over at Pebble Beach on the ocean. Uh, congratulations to Tom Hoagie for winning that one. Uh, and Jordan Spieth uh, is always going to be connected to that event also because of that shot he hit over the uh, the ravine. Uh, pull that up on YouTube if you missed it. What a crazy situation right by the edge of that cliff. What was it, 68 feet high? And uh, he pulled off the approach shot, later said that he regretted doing so because it was such a dangerous situation. And he certainly didn't finish on the front foot and hold the pose. He, he finished the swing and ran backwards to his caddy, Michael Greller. So what we're going to do this week is try to be on firmer footing than Jordan Spieth was last week. And it was the first bump in the road for DraftKings in 2022 for us here at Coach Talk. I've cashed the first three events that I've covered with the DraftKings coaches clipboard in cash games on DraftKings, but missed out last week because uh, we had a couple guys just miss that fourth round cut. And then Cantley, the payup option, didn't uh, didn't make it to the winner's circle. If he had, I think we would have cashed, but he did not. So we're going to try to regroup here with our more solid footing in the desert in Scottsdale, Arizona. And let's talk about this course here, TPC Scottsdale, renovated in 2015, and it's a par 71 now, 7,261 yards. So decent length, uh, but only three par fives, so that makes it a little bit tougher. You know about the 16th hole, the Coliseum. There's also a par 4 17th hole that's drivable, so that will provide some excitement down the stretch. Um, but again, very different than what we saw at Pebble Beach last week. The greens are much bigger here, 7,000 square feet on average. If you'll recall last week, they were 3,500 square feet on average. So the intense proximity to the whole focus that we had last week isn't quite as important this week. Rough, not too bad here, two and a half inches. Greens are about 12 on the stint meter. The stat of the week this week is going to be strokes gained T to green as five of the last six winners have finished first or second in that category during their win. Uh, so we're going to dive real deep into that stat here in a few minutes. But first, I want to touch on the recent winners and runners-up at this event. And there's not quite as much interest in these guys for me as normal. Um, I'm looking a little bit more this week at the horses for courses who have Done consistently well here, not necessarily won or finished in that second spot. Uh, but I do like a couple of the, the recent top finishers. So let's look at it. Last year, it was Kepka winning with a score of 19 under. The recent winning scores since the renovation have been ranging from about 14 to 19 under. So not a birdie fest, so to speak. But you do need, you do need to go pretty low here. And there are going to be some good scores. We've seen some low 60s shot here. Uh, so lots of birdies to be had. Now, I'm not really looking at Kepka this week uh, to repeat because he's just not in top form. Uh, I missed the cut at the Farmers in his last event. Uh, and of course, he can turn it up at any time. Maybe it'll be this week, but I'm, I'm not willing to spend up for him. Uh, although last year, I do have to mention, he only missed 10 greens in regulation for the entire event. That's how you get it done, uh, and he's a ter terrific ball striker when he's healthy. Runners-up last year were K.H. Lee and Xander Shoffley. K.H. Lee is a potential value play at 7,300 on DraftKings, uh, but 
uh, missed the cut in his other appearance here. And lately, he's been making cuts, but a T48 and a T63. So nothing really to write home about. Xander, a uh, guy that I just absolutely love, but he's on the on the borderline for me because of his recent form. He finished 12th at the Tournament of Champions, tied for 34th at the Farmers, and then he went overseas at the Saudi International last week and tied for 18th. So he potentially is trending in the right direction, uh, but there are some other guys in that price range I like a little bit better. Going back to 20, that was the playoff win for Webb Simpson over Tony Finau. I remember that one vividly, watching it as I was waiting for the Super Bowl to begin. Uh, so Webb, uh, nine of his 11 appearances here, he's made the cup, made the cut and had five top 10s. So he plays well here. But again, he's just been a little bit off lately. His only appearance here recently was a tied for 61st at the Sony. A decent price at 8600 but not my first option. And Tony Finau, 8900 He's only two for six here on made cuts uh, with that second place finish. And he's coming off a missed cut at the Farmers where he went 67 in the first round and 77 in the second round. We saw that a lot with that split between the North Course and the South Course at Torrey Pines. Uh, so don't really love that recent form for him. Ricky Fowler won it back in 19, and Brandon Grace finished second. Uh, Ricky Fowler, um, one of these former stars who's just not going the right direction, played well here. He's made 10 of 13 cuts, four top 10s. He also had a tournament at the Farmers, sort of like Finau, where he went 66 in the first round, but 76 in the second round. So he's not coming in with top form. Brandon Grace... Uh, two for two on top tens here, uh, but he's coming off a missed cut at the Sony, so he's not in top form. But 7,100, he'd at least be somebody I would consider as a GPP option because of that price. If you go back to 18, that's when Gary Woodland won it, and he's had a lot of success here, made nine of 12 cuts. Uh, he's coming off a tie for 39th at the Farmers. So 7,300, uh, that's probably the guy I would feel best about that I've talked about so far, so far, just given his price. Uh, but we know he's had some injury issues lately, been inconsistent. Uh, so I'm not ultra confident in him. Ches Reeve was the runner up in 18 and I like his price. He's 6,800 and he's one of the guys I had uh, circled as a key play last week. And he disappointed because he missed the cut uh, despite playing well on the back nine of his third round. He missed that uh, strange cut where it was, again, after 54 holes. So he didn't get to play on Sunday despite shooting three under. Uh, but he does have two top tens here. So I like him as a GPP option again uh, because he has the potential to to finish uh, near the top of the leaderboard. Now, the guy I like the most in this group is next. It's Hideki Matsuyama. Remember, he won back-to-back -back here in 2016 and 2017. He's made seven of eight cuts in this event, and he has four top tens. So he's been very consistent. Uh, pretty good ratio to have half of your uh, appearances end in the top ten. And he's only 10-4 on DraftKings. So he's a lot less expensive than some of the other top players. And there are a bunch of the top names in golf here this week. It's a really fun uh, group, a lot of options. I like the pricing here because it's the reverse of last week where we didn't have as many top names in golf in the event. So if you'll recall, I talked about a lot of guys who were priced up a lot higher than usual, like a Kevin Streelman, who was 9,100. Well, this week we have guys who are back to bargain prices. Uh, so you know, players who might have been 9000 last week are in the $7,000 range this week. So uh, I'm excited about uh, how it's all going to play out. Uh, runners up in 17 and 16 were Webb Simpson and Ricky Fowler, who I've talked about already. All right, let's dig into the key stat of the week here, and it is strokes gained T to green. And what I did was I looked at the player's who were ranked in the top 20 in that event or in that stat 
uh, last year and this year. Now, the, the reason I looked at last year is because you've got that bigger sample size uh, for that entire season, you know, who, who got it to the green uh, most efficiently. And, uh, you know, that's really the key here uh, in this tournament. So Rom number one on that list, uh, Justin Thomas, number three, along with Patrick Cantlay. So I want to take those guys as a group. Um, all good options. Wouldn't be surprised if any of them win this event. Um, Rom coming off that tied for third at the Farmers, where he didn't have a great final round. Very consistent in this event. He's six for six on made cuts, uh, three top tens. Um, but he just, you know, he hasn't busted up to the winner's circle here. And so I don't, I don't want to spend 11-6 on him uh, because, as I mentioned, there's all these good players who are much more affordable. And I think you can build a balanced roster this week and not have to go up to the ultra top of the leaderboard uh, in terms of the price range. And then Justin Thomas coming off a tie for 20th at the Farmers, where he had a kind of a rough weekend, shooting 73-74. Uh, he has made five of seven cuts here and two top tens. Um, and again, with any of these guys, because it wouldn't surprise anybody if they win, it, it's hard to fade them. Uh, but I think in my first lineup, I will fade Rom and Justin Thomas and Cantlay, who has just been peppering the top 10, including tied for fourth at Pebble uh, last week. Uh, possibly I'll get to one of those guys on FanDuel, but focusing on draftings right now. So after those three, uh, you get to some uh, cheaper options. Uh, Keegan Bradley was sixth in T to green last year, strokes gained, and he does have a, a T22 here last year. Uh, this calendar year, he's gone uh, tied for 12th and tied for 65th, so he's been making cuts, so he's a possibility. Then we've got Victor Hovland, who just wins everywhere. Uh, his last event was a win in Dubai. Uh, 10 2. I like that discount over those first three studs I mentioned. Uh, Brooks Kepka, we've talked about, uh, not going to play him this week. Corey Connors, 8,300. Now, that price jumps out at me as a great price for a tremendous ball striker. But his three events in this calendar year, he's gone 11th, missed cut, and missed cut. So I'll probably stay off of Corey Connors this week. Uh, same thing with the next guy on the list, Daniel Berger, who has three top tens in seven appearances in this event, but he had to withdraw from Pebble Beach due to a back issue, and I'm going to stay away from him until I see that he is fully healthy and back at 100%. Uh, next in strokes gain T to green last year was Hideki. Uh, I've talked about him, one of my favorite pay-up options this week. Uh, this year he's won at the Sony, and then he was tied for 30th at the Farmers. Uh, then we've got Finau. I, I mentioned him. I uh, plan to fade him this week. Xander is next. And then Russell Henley rounds out the top 20 from last year. Here's another mid-tier option I like. He's 8,200. Uh, been playing well this year. He had a second-place finish at Sony. Tied for 14th at the Amex. And decent uh, results here and very consistent. He was tied for 30th last year. Tied for 15th and 19th. Tied for 16th in 2017. So I'm willing to pay 8200 for a guy I feel very strongly about, uh, very likely to finish in that top 20. All right, let's turn to this year's stats. Strokes gained T to green in the current season. The guys who are playing this week, the highest ranked player in that uh, stat is Luke List, coming off the win at the Farmers, uh, 7700 on DraftKings is a solid price for him. Uh, and decent performances. Uh, last year, he finished tied for 30th in this event and tied for 26th back in 18. And uh, the thing I like about Luke List is he's had that extra week to relax and recover after his victory. And hopefully he's gotten back into focus and is uh, ready to contend again. Next on this stat list is Russell Henley. Once again, there are five guys who are uh, who are appearing in the top 20 here for this year as well as last year, which I love. That shows the consistency year to year, and Henley is one of them. 
Next is John Rahm. Again, no surprise that he's uh, in this category as well. Uh, next for this year's ranking, we have Matt Fitzpatrick, who really had a nice showing at Pebble, considering it was his first year, uh, first event uh, of the calendar year. He finished tied for sixth. All of his rounds were in the 60s. And this is his first time playing uh, the WM Phoenix Open. So we'll see if he can keep that trend and uh, get off to a hard, hot start at 8,700, certainly playable for me on DraftKings. Next, we have Sam Burns, 9,300. Uh, he follows the pattern of uh, Finau, where good good first round at the Farmers, and then he shot 76 in the second round to miss the cut. So uh, I do like how Sam Burns matches up to this course, but uh, he gets a bit of a ding uh, because of his recent form. Next, Austin Eckroat, who I had some exposure to last week, uh, and he was one of those guys uh, who missed the cut by one stroke at four under. And it was a little bit tighter cut than usual. It was top 60 in ties instead of the top 65 in ties. So that was unfortunate, but he's at 6,200 this week. Uh, so he's in play for me. Hideki is one of the guys who's on the stat in uh, both years, top 20. Uh, you know I like him this week. Taylor Gooch, 7,800. Tied for 20th at the Farmers. Uh, his stats weren't great that week, um, so he's kind of borderline for me, but I do like the price tag. And then Tom Hoagie, coming off that win at Pebble. He finished tied for 25th here in 2020, so he's got enough course experience uh, to, to make the cut for me. Uh, here's a value play, James Hahn. He's only 6,200 on DraftKings. And he's missed the cut in his last two events, but he's made seven of nine cuts at this event. He finished 10th last year, tied for 11th in 2018. Uh, so there's a GPP option for you if you want to uh, pay down with one of your players and pay up for another one of the studs. Uh, Justin Thomas on this list again, along with Corey Connors. And then Aaron Wise, 17th this year in strokes gain T to green. Uh, another one of those guys at the farmers started with a 67, then shot 75, missed the cut. He's really cheap on DraftKings, 7,100. Uh, but I don't love that recent form. And then Louis Oosthuizen, uh, this is another interesting one because he, has, he hasn't played a competitive event since mid November when he withdrew with an injury. He was going to play last week at the Saudi International, but they had some travel issues. So didn't make it, but he's 8,800 and he's only played here twice, but he's finished third and 11th. So Louie is in my player pool. And then last one, uh, top 20 this year for Stokes Gain, T to Green, Troy Merritt, who's only 7,000 on DraftKings, had a terrific tournament last week at Pebble, finishing tied for fourth. He finished uh, top 25 here uh, in 2017. And this is a guy who's really streaky. Uh, so again, nice GPP option at a low price. All right, a couple uh, final things here before we finish up. Uh, do appreciate you joining me. Hit that thumbs up if you don't mind, and then subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, and then if you want my lineups this week, then go to our website, dfscoachtalk.com. Sign up for your membership. We'll send you an email, get you into our Discord, and then I will give out those lineups tonight as I'm recording this on Wednesday afternoon. I also give out weekend lineups on Friday. Uh, and then, of course, with your membership, you'll get all of our basketball lineups seven days a week, and you'll get our Super Bowl lineups on Sunday. So DFSCoachTalk.com. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us on Twitter, at DFSCoachTalk, and you can find me on Twitter, at Language Olympic. All right, two other things I want to mention. Uh, there was an event, the Saudi International, Last week, played overseas. A lot of the top names were there. Harold Varner, the third, got his win. Uh, what a dramatic finish, you know, holding that bomb on the last hole to win. He's 7,800. A good course history here. He's made four of six cuts, has a top 10. Uh, and so, you know, the challenge here with him is uh, the win, the emotions, and the jet lag with the big travel. Uh, so, 
those are the variables he's going to have to overcome, but 7,800 is a good price for him. And then Bubba Watson finished second in that event. He's 9,000, and he's been great in this event. 13 of 15 cuts, and he has six top 10s. So he's worth a look. Abraham, the other guys who were in the top 20 in that event who are playing this week, Abraham Answer tied for eighth. He's 7,900. And then Xander, who we've discussed, uh, tied for 18th. And then uh, following up on Pebble Beach here and, and Jordan Spieth, uh, with that second place finish, he also has a strong course history here, uh, three for five on his cuts, and they've all been top tens. Uh, tied for fourth last year, he's 9,900 on DraftKings. Um, and then two other random players I want to mention, Billy Horschel, who's eight of nine making the cut here, including one top 10. He's 7,900, uh, coming off tied for 11th at the Farmers. And then finally, if you want one more potential value GPP play, Harry Higgs is 6,300 this week. Uh, he had that uh, tournament recently, the Amex, where he was really in great shape contending. And then he had a final round 77 to finish tied for 40th. Then he missed the cut at the Farmers. So that's why he's 6,300 and why it's a GPP play, because he's got uh, some great upside, but a little bit inconsistent. He did finish tied for 25th here back in 2020. All right, so that covers the WM Phoenix Open. Hope you enjoyed that. Try to hit on a lot of the golfers that I'm considering. Quick note on as many guys as I could get in. And again, if you want the lineups, come to DFSCoachDoc.com and sign up. And then we'll be back again next week for some more golf action as we look to crush it in DFS. Thanks, everybody.